Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. So I thought today I would have a play with some images inspired by the cherry tree out in the back garden. I've taken some photographs and I'll put a couple on screen just here of the cherry blossom, the sakura. Um, I thought I'd try and paint something which is kind of inspired by that today. Um, and I've, In my Dina Wakely multi-surface art journal on one of the cotton white pages um, and I thought that I would use some gouache. Um, Ian bought me this set of 12 gouache um, watercolours uh, as a Valentine's present this year, um, which is kind of funny because he also bought me this book for Valentine's last year. So kind of combining the two together. I haven't had a chance to play with these at all. I've never used gouache before, so I'm not sure what to expect. So I'm going to just have a play and try and create something um, which is reminiscent or vaguely reminiscent of those Sakura um, cherry blossoms in a kind of even maybe an abstracty kind of way today. So that kind of blue, pink and brown from the tree is kind of going to be what I will be doing. Now I've got plenty of water, some clean paint brushes of different sizes all washed and ready to go. So I'm going to start off just by grabbing some um, blue. I'm hoping, oh that's a nice colour blue. I'm just going to put a little, I don't know how much um, these kind of water down or anything. Like I said, I'm coming to these completely new, haven't used them ever before. So I'm just going to squirt some water into that and then take a fairly largish brush and then just load, mix up and I'm just going to do a colour wash across the background and see what happens. So the colours are staying fairly true and quite vibrant as well. As you can see, very, very nice. Put a little bit more out. I need a bit more. I'm going to put a huge amount out. So mix with the water and then paint and then join back up again in the middle. Now I'm not even sure how um, these will dry, so with normal watercolours the colour that you've got while the paints are wet are not necessarily the same colours you get when they're dry. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to that and I'm just going to go back over, back and forth. Now before that dries I'm just going to take a little bit of white tiny tiny bit of white and I'm just going to spritz a little bit of water and I'm not even going to bother cleaning the brush. I'm just going to mix that with whatever's on the brush, get a real kind of palish colour and I'm just going to create a kind of non-flat kind of background if you know what I mean. So it's not too blue blue and flat. So like I said I've got a complete clean pot of water here so I can easily wash my brushes off. Get them dry and then I'm ready to go again. Okay so that's the blue. I'm going to just heat set that and then I'm going to come back and add a little bit more colour. Okay, so the blue page is dry. As you can see, that colour is staying kind of true to life. I'm just going to add 
a little bit more of that white paint down because I want to just kind of break up that background. You can see it's not flat, flat colour. It is a kind of nice motley colour. It's lighter in some areas, darker in others, which is just great. Um, but I want to add some speckles, so I'm going to do some splatters. So I've got the white gouache and some water and then let's just see if we can try and break up that background a little bit more. That'll do. Don't need to overdo it. And I'm going to obviously dry that off and see what we get. See whether it dies back a lot or not. Okay, so as you can see, the splatters have died back a little bit, but not as much as I would have expected from a watercolour paint. So I'm quite happy with the way that looks. Happy, happy. Okay, so I'm going to bring out some brown. So we've got um, burnt umber, this says. So I'm going to just drop some of that into my palette. And then I'm going to take a smaller brush. There we go. This is a, a Dina Wakely Media brush, and I'm just going to wet it first. Just dampen the bristles. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water just to activate it a little bit. And then I'm going to use this, and I'm going to turn this on its side. And I'm going to just from the edge bring the brush in and I'm just going to twist it as I'm bringing the brush in just to kind of get some kind of twig effects. I'll just pan that out to nothing, just make that a little bit thicker. I think that, let's just take that right off the edge. I think that is going to do for that. That will do me for my little branches. So again, I'll get that dried and then I'll be back. Okay, I was rather lucky then because when I opened my next colour, the deep rose, for the first time, it just splattered everywhere. It literally just shot out of the tube. So I was very very lucky that it didn't land smack onto my page. It just landed here. You can just see where there was a thin string of it. It's just gone down there. So that was a very lucky narrow escape. Okay so I've put the remnants of it on there and I've also got some of the white. So what I want to try and do is just take a little bit of that pale pink and then I'm going to mix it with some of the white to get a real kind of pale pink colour. Now I've got a photograph of the Sakura here in front of me on my phone and I'm just going to try and kind of keep the shape but not necessarily exact. Just kind of follow the shape of the petals. Now bearing in mind there's five on the Sakura. 
So I'm just going to add, maybe this brush isn't quite as detailed or the paint isn't quite as runny as it should be, but that's okay. I can always add a touch of water. Almost kind of like a diamond pattern. I'm just going to see if we can try and squeeze in five petal shapes. Pick up some white just to add in some variation. And then the last one. Grab some more white, and I might just get a little bit of a detail brush. See how the pink bring it lighter from the tip, and then darker towards the middle. And then when it gets really, really down to the tip, we can go darker still. And then just add some flushes of that pink. Just kind of dot it. And then I can come back in a bit. Add a bit more detail. But to start off with, I want to add some more flowers like this onto it. So I'm going to see if I can find a smaller, more detailed brush, maybe one with a pointed nib, which I've got one here. Uh, let's see what else we've got. So that's a flat nibbed one. Oh, let's have a look. Okay, so I've picked up more fine point brush than this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start adding on some more. So this is going to take a little bit of time. So I'll go away and do this and then I'll come back when I'm pretty much happy with what I've got. So I'll put some music on.
Okay, I'm going to dry those off. Obviously, they're not anatomically correct, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, so I've also mixed up some yellow ochre. I think it's yellow ochre with that pink to create a kind of browny pink. And I just want to um, kind of add in just a few kind of like suggestions of leaves. Just kind of kind of, I don't think it's wet enough this, I don't think I've got hardly enough paint, but Going to add a few kind of like highlights to the branches too, just so that they're not flat brown. So the cherry kind of like leaves kind of, although they're reddish, they're also like a brownie colour and they tend to curl. When the cherry blossom is open, Just add a few little leaf shapes. Probably the paint's a bit too dry. It's not enough moisture, I don't think. Definitely not enough moisture. Give them a little bit more form. Okay, so that's pretty much dried. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add in some black kind of detailing. Just some little black dots. 
just into the centres because when you look at the Sakura they have kind of long dark stamens or whatever they're called not being botanically minded it's difficult <laughs> Not quite sure, but what does look like is that they are on white stems. So let me just see if I can break out my little white pen. I'm just drawing. Like I said, they don't have to be anatomically correct. Just give you the hint of what it is you want to achieve with them. And then if you want to, obviously you can add in more detailing I did say this is probably going to take a while. So again, I'll put some music on and you can watch me add in my little doodles. Okay, so there's the doodling around outside and I'm going to get some black pen. And there, I think I'm going to call this a day. I think I've added in enough detail, he says. Just adding in a touch more. But I think that will do. I'm happy with the kind of abstracty look that I've achieved with um, those little flowers. The background colour. I think it's just enough. See, I'm still going and I've just said and we're going to stop. <laughs> so 
So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to call this a day. So that's it. I'm going to sign it and date it and call this page done. So I haven't decided what I'm going to put as a quote on there for now. So because I haven't decided what I'm going to put, I'm not going to bother just adding any old one. And I will probably come back and revisit this at a later date. So that's it for now. Hope you've enjoyed watching me play with those new gouache watercolour paints. Um, if you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all for me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.